Today we're going to talk about the voice as an instrument. We're going to talk about the three main elements of the voice that make it a musical instrument, the differences between singing and other instruments, and what instruments you can use to compare to the human voice. Before I start telling you about the elements of the voice that make it a music instrument, I invite you to download my three exercises for tired voices. You can find them in the description below. They are exercises that in a very gentle manner they go through these three elements so you can not only know the theory but also put it in practice right away. My name is Jorgelina, I'm a vocal coach and I specialize in teaching how to sing contemporary music from a holistic and integral approach. What makes the voice an instrument? Well, every music instrument has three main elements and the voice is not different. So the first element of every instrument is the fuel of the instrument. Every instrument has a fuel, something that gives the energy to it, and in the case of singing, the fuel of it is breathing. It's actually, sometimes it's described as a string instrument, but it's actually a wind instrument because of the fuel. Like in other wind instruments, the fuel is also the breathing, but in string instruments such as guitar, the energy of the plucking of the finger is what gives them energy. So basically what happens, you breathe in, and then when you exhale, if the vocal cords are open, you exhale normally, but if the vocal cords rhythmically close and open, resisting the passage of air, that is when you phonate. A difference between singing and other instruments is that you actually put a lot of the training into how to fuel the instrument in an effective manner, because different ways of breathing will give you a totally different voice. Every breath you take gives you a different voice, so your voice is very, very dynamic. In singing, there are different ways of breathing for different things you want to sing, but there are some general things that we're going to talk about in other videos. For now, just know that when we train our breathing for singing, we train the breathing in a way that your intercostal muscles are open when you inhale, of course, but then also the inhaling muscles are still active when you exhale. That is what gives you an optimal breathing for singing. The second element of the voice is the source of sound. And in the case of singing, the source of sound happens at the vocal cords level. So basically, as I said before, you have the fuel, you exhale, and when you exhale, the vocal cords open and close. That is what gives you the primary vibration. The primary vibration of a sound is never the final sound you hear. That's the third element that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Let's talk just a little bit about that source element that is so, so important. So Basically, when you exhale, you have a certain air pressure, and that air pressure has to be enough to make the vocal cords vibrate. That air pressure is actually what makes the vocal cords come together. The higher the pressure, the more they come together. Sometimes people think that for singing you have to be completely relaxed. Well, no, because if you are completely relaxed, there is no sound. If the air pressure that you use to exhale is not enough, the vocal cords are not going to come together. On the other hand, if that pressure is too high, then they are going to be coming together a little bit too much, and that is what is going to cause injuries in your voice. So a big part of the singing training is learning to coordinate that exhaling and the motion of the vocal cords in a way that it's effective and uh, optimal for singing in a healthy manner, in a way that allows the most differentiation in your vocal cords and in your voice. The third element of uh, every instrument is the resonance. In this case, you filter the sound in your resonators. So we have many, basically our whole body is a resonator. Anything you change in your body is going to change the way you sound. But the main, main, main two resonators you have are the throat area and the mouth area. So basically the vocal tract, which goes from the vocal cords until your lips. That is the, the biggest space of resonance you have. And that is what changes the sound you hear. The modifications on that vocal tract are what filter the sounds and boost different frequencies of every sound you sing. So the training in singing for those resonators is not only to make it the space optimal for you, but also, of course, especially in contemporary music, to modify that sound voluntarily to make the different sounds that you want. That is the difference between, for example, and you sing the same pitch, but you change the internal space of the vocal tract and the sound is going to come out differently. And this is very important, especially in contemporary music, in which every different music genre has a different sound. That is also what makes every single human voice <laughs> unique. So every single person has a very, very unique voice color, voice timbre, and that is unique, available to you. So when people, sometimes people ask me, how do I discover my own sound? 
my true voice. Well, it's already yours by default. Your face structure and all the particularities of, that you already have are what makes your voice yours. And as you change them, they are going to change as well. Of course, well, it also means that you have control over the way you sound, but your sound is there already. It's yours. No one can take it away from you. I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the difference between singing and other instruments. It's important to talk about this because some people think that singing is not actually a music instrument. Now, if you listen to what I said before, it has the three elements of every instrument, so it is a music instrument, no doubt of that. But there are some major differences between singing and other instruments that make singing extremely special. The first one, and most obvious of all, is that, of course, when we sing, we actually can use lyrics. So not only we can use the tone of our voice, our melodies, our phrasing to express emotion, but also the proper words. Words have an energy and we singers are the lucky ones that get to express those. Another big difference that we singers have is that we don't get to physically touch our instrument. When you play other instruments, mainly you are using voluntary muscles. They might be differentiated, such as the fingers, but it's still a more mechanic. But when you are singing, you cannot see your instrument. You only get to control it and manipulate it through sensation and indirect movements. As a singer, you need to learn what movements and what muscles are available to you to work with, to influence the rest of the system. And you also have to train on becoming more aware of your instrument as a a whole in the, as a, as a big, the big picture of it and also the particular little muscles, uh, you can gain a lot of sensation and awareness about you know, even the vocal cords, but it takes time. So usually when you start singing, you start by perceiving the big things, what parts of your body are moving when you breathe in and how is your posture, things like that. And then little by little, you develop an instrument that you are more aware of and that you have more control over. Another big difference that we singers have also connected to what I said before is that we singers learn a lot through hearing. A big part of our training is that we learn melodies by hearing them and singing them back same as the rhythm. That is great because it gives us a, a really nice balance between theory and actually practicing. I mean, our whole body is an instrument. How? Because we learn so much through hearing, sometimes we tend to only focus on that. So very commonly singers, because we can learn through hearing and through repeating, we are a little bit lazy on learning music theory. And that is a problem because if you want to not only sing nicely, but also be a musician with your voice, you need to be able to communicate with other musicians to, at some degree, understand what you're doing. If you only learn through hearing, then you are actually quite limited in how creative you can be because you're always repeating the same tools over and over again. So if you want to be a great musician with your voice, you also have to train yourself as a musician. Do your scales, do your improv exercise, study your intervals. Those are super necessary for a vocalist to be skilled to be a musician, not only a nice voice. I wanted to take a little moment as well to talk about other instruments that resemble the human voice. There are some other instruments that are quite compatible with the human voice at some extent, and of course there are different opinions about that. The cello and the violin, those are said to be quite similar to the timbre of the human voice. In the case of the cello, it is also said that it can contain some nasal frequencies, which means it's not so good for us to imitate. In my opinion, the instrument that reminds me to a human voice is the theremin. I'm not sure if you ever heard of that, but it's a, a beautiful instrument, an electric instrument. <laughs> So that is just a curiosity, but you can, if you are interested in music composition, for example, having that on mind can help you use your instruments with more intention. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. In future videos, I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about each one of those three elements. Subscribe if you like this video. Go ahead and download my resources to put these three elements in practice. And I'll see you next video.